untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're continuing our series covering the Phyrexian Praetors and today it's time for Vorinclex, a monstrous raider, 6 mana, 6-6 six, six, with Trample and Haste that doubles all the counters we get while having the opponents. So it works very nicely with plus one plus one counters, which is the main type of counter in this deck, but it also works with loyalty counters on Planeswalkers, so we can often play them and use their ultimate ability right away. And then it also nerfs opposing Sagas, for instance, which also work with counters so as long as we control Vorinclex they won't be able to go to the next chapter and then it also nerfs opposing plus one counters and planeswalkers so very impactful commander but it does come at a price six mana is quite a lot for historic brawl so we do need to dedicate a lot of our deck to just ramping and generating mana which is this first category at one mana we've got the mystic and the Lanor elves and then lots of two mana cards including lots of creatures that can sometimes make more than one mana incubation druid worth point Pointing out can be adapted but can also maybe pick up a plus one counter somewhere else and then we'll be able to make three mana instead of just one and there's also the merge keeper which as soon as it's modified can also tap for two and there's other examples like the caryatid if we control a larger creature and sanctum weaver if we have multiple enchantments in play and then there's some ramp artifacts as well at two mana we've got some general sorceries like cultivate at three and then a Rishkar, also one of the better cards, as it can put plus one counters on two creatures when it enters, including potentially Incubation Druid or the Merge Keeper, so they can make more than one mana. And then all creatures with plus one counters can tap for green. Then there's the Circle of Dreams Druid, which can also be very explosive, especially off a turn one Mystic or Lenor Elves. And then Heraldic Banner naming green also pumps our creatures by one power. And Strixhaven Stadium is also a fun alternate win condition that works very well with Vorinclex, because if we tap it with Vorinclex in play, it will pick up two counters, and then whenever a creature we control hits the opponent, we can add two more counters to the stadium, and if we get to ten or more, we just win the game on the spot. So that's very fun. Then a Vastwood Surge can also be kicked to not only ramp, but also put plus one counters on the team. And a Leyline of Abundance can start out on the battlefield for free and can enhance our mana creatures, as well as provide a nice mana sink to put more plus one counters on the team. And then we get to the plus one counter creatures, which is the next category here, starting with Pack Leader, Good Pelt Collector, these can all passively pick up more counters as the game progresses. Gala Greeters gives us a few choices between plus one counter, two life, or a treasure token. We've got the Horn Beetle. Beast Caller, another nice addition from Dominaria. We've got the Ranger class, which can also provide card advantage once we level it up all the way by playing creatures off the top. There's Scavenging Ooze for a bit of graveyard hate and life gain. Preserver can also pay X when a non-human enters and put X plus one counters on it. The Oran Reef Ooze, another staple in a plus one counter synergy deck. The Outrider to go with our Snowlands can make it so our creatures enter with an extra counter on it. There's Champion of Lampholt, which can make our team unblockable if it picks up enough power. Then Yorvo can easily pick up more counters as we play Vorinclex. And then there's the Awakening of V2 Gassi, a 5 mana instant that can put 9 plus one plus one counters on a land we control and turn it into a creature. So this can put 18 counters out of nowhere thanks to Vorinclex, which can potentially steal a game. There's Defiler Vigor, another great addition from Dominaria United, letting us pay Phyrexian mana to cast our green permanence, and then putting a plus one counter on the entire team whenever we cast a green permanent spell. Then the Verger's Gearhulk, another great one at five mana, putting four plus one plus one counters on our creatures. There's Stone Cold Serpent as just a flexible card we can play at any point in our curve. The Ochre Jelly, also a nice one that will split up into several parts when it dies and can essentially keep getting it back over and over as long as we control Vorinclex. There's the Contortionist Troop, which can also put additional counters on the team if we enable Coven. And then Wildwood Scourge will also passively pick up additional plus one counters. Then we get to the Planeswalkers, which as we mentioned, we can potentially ultimate the turn we play them if we control Vorinclex. Garruk being a prime example, can minus seven, get an emblem saying at the beginning of your end step, you may search your library for a creature card and put it onto the battlefield. So that can easily take over a game, but we can also just play it at four mana, maybe on turn three after ramping, and then make a beast token, maybe pump up one of our creatures and give it trample until end of turn. Then uh, Vivian Arcbow Ranger sadly doesn't get to access our sideboard in Historic Brawl with the minus five ability since it doesn't exist but still very good with the plus one ability distributing plus one counters and trample and then minus three as removal. 
Then Anissa doesn't really need an introduction, essentially doubles her mana, makes it much easier to play for Inklex in the first place, and then it will also double the counters we put on our lands. Then a Vivian can help us find more creatures with the plus one, can take care of artifacts, enchantments, or creatures with flying using the minus three, and can also use the minus eight ultimate right away with a Vorinclex out, giving us an emblem where creatures we control have plus two plus two, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. And then the Monsters Advocate's also fun to play creatures off the top of our deck, can make beast tokens and potentially search our library for additional creatures with a minus two. Then we have a few card draw engines with Guardian Project. Whenever we play a creature essentially, Oracle of Moldiah can help us play lands of the top and play an additional land each turn. And the Great Henge has great synergy with Vorinclex as we get to put additional counters on our creatures as well as draw a card each time. And then we've got a few removal spells with a Blizzard Brawl, at two mana inscription which can also be kicked potentially help us fight and put plus one counters on our creature and voracious hydra can either double its counters or fight and then we've got the miscellaneous section with additional plus one counter synergies including hardened scales to put extra counters on our creatures snakeskin veil to give our creature hexproof and a plus one counter the ozolith is actually pretty good too this way for opponent cast a sweeper for instance we can put all those counters onto the ozolith then play vorinclex and then double the amount of counters from the ozolith onto vorinclex to hit the opponent right away with haste then there's Branching Evolution, similar to Hardened Scales, but this one actually doubles all the counters. And then Fight Rigging can also enable its hideaway pretty easily with Vorinclex, as it will enter and go up to 8 power right away, potentially cast a card for free, and then also just put an extra counter on a creature each turn. And finally, Symbiosis can be played as a land, or a 7 mana sorcery to find a creature and put additional counters on it potentially. And then our mana base has a few goodies. There's Castle, which also makes it easier to play Foreign Clax a turn ahead of schedule. There's Boseju as a bit of interaction. We've got a Lair of the Hydra, as well as Crawling Barons and Faceless Haven as creature lands, Fabled Passage mostly to synergize with Oracle of Moldiah to shuffle our deck, and then Karn's Bastion helps us proliferate, so by proliferating we can choose any number of counters, including plus one counters and loyalty counters on Planeswalkers, and put an additional one of those counters on that permanent, so that can also potentially be doubled by Vorinclex and be very impactful. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Riel, probably a cycling deck, and we've got a very good hand. Some RAM creatures to play. Turn 3 Nissa, if all goes according to plan. And then Nissa doubling our mana will make it trivial to play Vorinclex. Opponent with an Ominous Seas, also very synergistic in a Riel deck. And we'll just go for Cultivate here. Safer investment than an extra mana creature. And better synergy with Nissa as well. So we could see Riel here. Don't have an immediate answer, but happy enough for resolving Nissa. Ponon keeps up three mana. So I don't think we should go for Nissa this turn, in case of a counter spell. And instead, we can still double spell with maybe Ranger's Class plus, let's say, a Paradise Druid or Curator. So, sure. Bonad lets it resolve. Can attack for one. And we're probably going to see a card draw effect here, end of turn. Alright, it's going to be a Dragonfire killing Curator instead. That's acceptable. Maybe waiting to play Riel until they can get immediate value from it. Which is understandable. Opponent passing with 4 mana once again. Well, could start leveling up Ranger class. Could get Vorinclex countered in the hopes of then Nissa helping us replay it pretty easily anyways. Sure. And if Vorinclex resolves, then uh, that's nice too. Would also prevent Ominous Seas from picking up any counters. All right, so one counter spell down, still applying a bit of pressure here. And hopefully they tap out so we can resolve Nissa. All right, it's going to be a looting. So missing the extra red mana to also play Riel first, which I'm sure they would have preferred. This card's negates and another looting effect. 
and a midnight clock. All right. Feel pretty confident in Nissa now. Use the elf first since the forest will make more mana afterwards. And then I can plus. Can't quite play Vorinclex, but we can still do some damage here. Level up the Ranger class. Attack. Counter on maybe the forest in case of a three damage removal spell. And then I'm still fine playing Paradise Druids and Ozolith. Okay. And then next turn I should be able to replay Vorinclex. There's Riel. Two cards in hand and the flashback looting. Now they will be able to make some 8-8s with Ominous Seas before we get a chance to stop it with Vorinclex. But I think we'll be fine. Ooh, Virtuous Gear Hulk as well. So step one, play Vorinclex. Opponent looking to make a crack in a response here. That's fine. Untap our land. Gets six counters now. And then I could still play Gear Hulk if I'd like. And then spread out the counters evenly. Maybe just put two on Vorinclex and the land. And smash. And Vorinclex can get one more. And our opponent takes it. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And we're facing the Scarab God. So it's going to be a tough matchup. Can expect lots of removal. And maybe counter spells too. But I'll give it a shot. We've got some early ramp. And then Garruk, we can maybe try and play until after Vorinclex is on the battlefield. So we can ultimate right away. And that's a way to potentially win the matchup. For now, I guess Loam Speaker over Mindstone. Even though it's more likely to get killed, just want to get the removal out of the way. Opponent brainstorms. No shuffle, compass. Okay. Now, Mindstone plus a small Wildwood Scourge seems fine. As opposed to playing Garrick here. We'll get an extra counter from Hardened Scales, and then Jelly is not a Hydra, so it will give the Scourge additional counters. Okay, we could technically go for Vorinclex here. Chances of it working out are pretty slim. So maybe go for a big Ochre Jelly, which is also more removal resistant. So let's see here, four, five. That works. Scourge picks up two counters, can hit for five. So now we're head on board. And we can maybe stand a better chance of uh, resolving Vorinclex. Crux of Fate to wipe the board. At least we get back Ochre Jelly. And then now Vorinclex looks good. Hit for 10. And hope to untap to be able to play Garruk and Ultimate. Alright, never mind. River's Rebuke to bounce everything back. So really hoping for a land now. There we go. Replay Vorinclex. And haste is a pretty nice keyword when recovering from a board wipe. Bonus got T to Extinction, however. So our dreams of Ultimate and Garruk are probably gone now.
and our opponent also transforming the compass so now they can potentially contain Vorinclex. So plan is probably Mindstone, Hardened Scales, Garrick. And Garrick can make a beast. And then especially with Hardened Scales we can maybe hope to fight the Scarab God if that shows up. Although our opponent might have enough mana to immediately activate it and put another creature in play. Nothing too exciting on our side. And a Relic of Legends, okay. So, could replay Vorinclex. Opponent can of course use Spires. And then, if I pump the beast and attack with Vorinclex, they would have to chump with Scarab God. So that may be worth it. Assuming there's no additional interaction. That works. That's plus on the beast. And smash. Opponent uses Spires and trumps the Beast, okay. So that worked out. Scarab God will go back, but still a 5 mana investment to replay. So there it is again. This time they can activate and use Spires. But we will have the inscription to potentially fight with. So it gets an ochre jelly. And yeah, let's explore first, I suppose. Find a feral hydra. Although I think the plan is to kick inscription here. Trample the beast. Is there any reason to play Hydra now? Nah, no, let's attack. And since both creatures trample, I can wait for them to potentially block. Put on double blocks. So, kick inscription. All three modes. Vorinclax will get six counters here, I believe, between hardened skills and its own ability, so should be able to trample over for lethal. Oh no, Dark Ritual, what is this? I guess they can activate Scarab God one last time, but that's not gonna save them here. Okay. So close game here, all things considered. Was lucky to draw the lands when we needed to to replay Vorinclex. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a blue-green Zimone deck, and hands quite promising. Turn one, Elvish Mystic. Turn two, we can already double spell. And then plenty of ramp to play an early Vorinclex. Pelt Collector will automatically pick up a ton of extra counters. So any additional plus one counter synergy is welcome. For now Pelt Collector and probably fine to play a creature instead of Explorer. So Curator may be able to draw a few extra cards in the process. It's going to be a Mind Stone after an Explorer, so opponent's also off to a good start. And a Paradise Druid. Okay, can play Explore first maybe. Champion of Lampholds I could play, and then next turn that will also pick up extra counters from Vorinclex. And uh, sure we'll attack with the Curator. 
Maybe Path Collector also could have attacked, but don't really want to trade it. Uh, Elder Gergroth is kind of a roadblock, but Great Henge is awesome. So we'll play Vorinclex. And then next turn, hopefully, play Henge and the Merge Keeper to draw right away. So, yeah, no attacks. Probably take a hit off Gergroth. Time for Zimon, perhaps. It's gonna be the a legendary Murfog God instead. And a Maze Mind Tomb. Okay, at least our opponent's tapped out. So we can resolve our Great Henge. And a Merge Keeper. Hopefully string together a few more creatures. Cultivates. All right. Maybe should have used a curator for mana, although I'm not sure how it works on multiple creature types. Yeah, I guess it shares a creature type with druids, so it wouldn't have drawn us any extra cards. Okay, uh, do I attack? Don't think so. One more creature in our team becomes unblockable. So I think we take six again instead of trying to double block. Opponent making beasts instead of drawing. But the beasts themselves don't really have a good attack and they also won't be able to block. Provisioner makes a treasure. And Vivian, quite a draw. So play Vivian. And we can either take out Gergroth or just distribute some plus one counters, which may be able to just win the game here. Since now our team is unblockable thanks to Champion, if I attack with all, that's 15 plus 6, 21, 22, 23. So we're one damage short, I believe. Let me just double check 15. 21, 22, 23. So yeah, one point short. Vivian also on 10 loyalty for what it's worth. So I'll keep it conservative. Attack with Champion, Pelt Collector, Merge Keeper, and leave a couple blockers back, including Vorinclex, which can now block Gergroth. Or I could send Vorinclex. Now we'll do it like this. Opponent's at 11, and we'll pass. Opponent attacking Vivian, which uh, yeah, can probably take a significant hit. But our opponent concedes, yeah, they didn't find the answers they were looking for. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Freyalis, so mono green elves, and we've got to turn one elves ourselves, so yeah, I'll keep. Stadium also very fun if we get it going with Vorinclex. Can be an alternate win condition and can win surprisingly quickly, since if we just tap it, it already gets two counters. So we'll tap that end of turn to pick up its first of many counters. And then now can maybe set up an ambush with Wildborn Preserver. Can play Scourge as well. We have options. We do want to go wide to an extent to not only pressure Freelys, but also win with Stadium. So I can play Scourge for X equals 1 uh, after playing Preserver, and then pay 1 for Preserver, and then Scourge will also pick up an extra counter. Okay. Warmaster into Leaf Gilder, so opponent with a decent start as well. And yeah, play Vorinclex. Now the stadium only gets one counter, but next turn it'll get two. 
and then pay X, but we don't have any mana. So just gonna smash with Vorinclex and I think Preserver will probably take it, which means we get four more counters on the stadium, up to seven. So if we just connect with one creature next turn, we could win, although Kogla might have one or two things to say about it. Trades for Vorinclex. And opponent attacks. Kill the 1 1. Stadium loses a counter. So cannot replay Vorinclex, but we can add a ton of counters to the Preserver. So let's do that. And then x equals, I want to say, 5. And then Elf can attack. And then we should still win the game as three creatures connect and we get three more counters on Stadium. All their opponents also down to four in the meantime. But yeah, still fun to see an alternate win condition here in Historic Brawl. Okay, we're on the draw facing Tatiova, Benthic Druid, so blue-green ramp. So having an explosive start is going to be important and this certainly qualifies turn one Mystic, turn two Circle of Dreams. And then Guardian Projects will help us draw additional cards to maybe keep up with Tatiova's card draw, at least initially. Small argument for maybe playing Cultivate here. So we can draw with Guardian Project after playing Circle of Dreams. But uh, this will give us a little bit more mana. So we could already play a turn 3 Vorinclex. Opponent's got the Azusa, so also off to a good start. And uh, yeah, maybe I go Guardian Project plus Stone Coil for two, although better to play Stone Coil after playing Vorinclex. Are we afraid of a counter spell is the question. They could easily have one, but for the most part these landfall decks don't have room for a ton of interaction. So I'll give it a shot. That worked. Hit for six. And then our opponent gets to draw a couple cards here with Tatiova, most likely. That's one, and it's even a fetch land, so we'll draw two right away. And then they still have two land drops remaining. So yeah, opponent's going off as well. Azusa, probably the best of the three mana creatures to play extra land, since it's plus two instead of plus one. Okay. Well, I can ultimate Vivian here, which seems pretty strong. Um, can I do anything else beside it? If I play a Stone Coil... Right now this makes 3 mana, so I can play Stone Coil for 3 and then still be able to play Vivian. I guess I could even play it for 4, because this will tap for 4. That checks out. Play Vivian, ultimate. I've lost so you see the look on and smash. Right now. So now our team has plus two, plus two, Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. Those are useful keywords, although blue decks can of course still bounce our entire team without needing to destroy it. So if they have a River's Rebuke or something similar, they could still recover. Temporal Sundering to take an extra turn is a good start. Although it looks like they're not hitting any additional land drops, their opponent's out of lands, which does hurt their chances. Provisioner. Is there a land? There is. Okay. Opponent gets to keep going. And an Augur of Autumn to play lands off the top will certainly help. Gilded Goose. As Coven is enabled here. And there's a land, so yeah, that could be quite dangerous now. Opponents playing off the top of their deck in addition to drawing a ton of extra cards. We still couldn't really have asked for a better start, so it just goes to show how powerful Azusa plus Tatiova can be. And there's a Rivers Rebuke, wow, can't believe it. Opponent with kind of the perfect answer here. Temporal Sundering into River's Rebuke. 
And, uh, yeah, don't really see us recovering now. Still have the emblem, of course, but we're just so far behind on mana. And our opponent's just uh, getting a ton of extra value each turn. So best chance, probably Mystic plus Circle of Dreams. Just to get those going again. Could play a Stone Coil for one. I think we wait until after Vorinclex, although we're likely drawing more plus one counter synergy, so sure. Might be able to Emblem Vivian twice in one game and still lose. At least the uh, Rivers Rebuke is dealt with. But now it's time for the opponent to find more landfall synergies to completely take over. So their eventual win condition could involve some large green creatures, which at least Indestructible will help with. But another Bound spell could just put us too far behind. Swordtooth for an extra land, so... I've lost track of how many lands our opponents already played this turn. Another fetch land. Opponent making a ton of treasure as well in the process. And uh, no shortage of cards in hand. Beanstalk for ramp can eventually be a large creature as well. And Elrond's Epiphany to take an extra turn. So no fun allowed here. Opponent hasn't cast Time Warp yet, and now Conjecture. I'm sure we'll copy an extra turn card in the future. At least no Time Warp to get back, as the other extra turn cards exile themselves. So we're probably not going to get another turn. But uh, yeah. Still, Mystic into Circle of Dreams was an exciting start. No attacks, at least. And opponent gets to take their extra turn now. And I guess gets back River's Rebuke, so yeah, I think that's probably gonna wrap things up here. And in the interest of time, GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Kalia, Zenith, Seeker, Angel, Dragon, and uh, Demon deck here. And we've got a keepable hand, I think. Turn 1 Ocelith, turn 2 could see the advantage of playing a Gala Greeters, and then turn 3 Outriders. So then when we play Merge Keeper it will enter with an extra counter, so it taps for 2. Opponents got their turn 2 Mindstone, and uh, yeah, Outrider. And Gala Greeters can make a treasure for now. We'll give it plus one counters later. Murderous Rider takes care of Outrider, sadly. Okay, so now just play a Merge Keeper. Still into the idea of making a treasure token. And then next turn we can already play Vorinclex. And then we'll go for the plus one counter as we'll get two of them. Maybe even play a Scourge first. 
and then hoping for more plus one counter synergies of the top. Might have been worth it to play Scourge last turn already, giving the Gala Greeters a plus one counter, in which case it would have picked up some additional counters as well. Okay, now Pelt Collector we can play first. And then we'll go for Treasure first, and then play Vorinclex. So we'll just go for plus one counter now. And smash for nine. And then in the event of a board wipe, at least we have the treasures to replay Vorinclex, which will then also get a ton of extra counters from Ozolith. The chum block does point towards a potential sweeper being in our future. Crux of Fate would make a lot of sense in a deck playing some dragons, but could see some white sweepers as well. Alright, just a vanishing verse on Vorinclex, that's fine. Can still replay it next turn. So yeah, I think uh, just replay Vorinclex for now. Playing a large Wildwood Scourge was also an option. Although that's going to be a little bit more exciting once uh, we replay Vorinclex. So yeah, attack for 16. Now a sweeper would be... A lot more impactful now that some of our treasures are gone. Although we would still get all the counters back on Ozolith at least. Just a Mortify on Vorinclex, that's fine. Pelt Collector also grows, and a Flame Sweep's not gonna do it here. Alright, awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Evelyn, so three-color kind of control, maybe Vampire. And we've got a fine hand, I think. Turn one Elves. Turn two, can play Curator, keep up Snakeskin, or try and play the Champion as early as possible. Cold Steel Heart from our opponents. Sweepers are definitely still a concern. There's Rishkar. To keep up Snakeskin Veil or not to keep up Veil. Playing Curator I think is fine and then we'll just pass. Okay, Expertise would wipe the board, but I can save the Curator at least. Seems worth it. And a Grim Tutor for free. Yeah, opponent's not messing around here. So now can go Ozolith plus probably Rishkar to make more mana, so next turn we can play Vorinclex. Could be another board wipe. Could be some other answer to Vorinclex, which also seems likely. So let's go Champion plus Yorvo here instead. And then Yorvo is the only giant noble in our deck. Opponent's just gonna draw with Graven Lore. Not sure if that's the card they tutored up. And if there is another board wipe, at least Ozolith will still give us a bunch of counters in the future. Okay, I think we just attack instead of trying to play Vorinclex, which most likely gets countered. And then Inscription can still come in handy. Opponents at 10. They can flash an Evelyn, but we can fight it. It's gonna be Scrutiny for 3 instead. Well, opponents got a lot of cards in hand. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they weren't able to find any removal in time. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential. Banner into Nissa can lead to some good things facing Kodama. So I expect some early plus one counters to get the ball rolling. So might have to play Ochre Jelly turn two, just to prevent him from kind of snowballing extra lands. Yeah, that seems fine, even though I'd prefer to keep it for later. And then Karn's Bastion can maybe help proliferate to put more counters on it later. Okay, so Ochre Jolly gonna wait to trade for Wildwood Scourge now. And then next turn we can play Nissa. Opponent will still get to search up an extra land. So they will still be a little bit ahead. But Nissa should be able to close the gap. And then of course once we play Vorinclex, the plus one counter synergies will struggle. I'm okay offering the trade for my forest, and then we can still play Druid afterwards. And then Druid blocks Stone Coil. And next turn it's uh, time for Vorinclex. Hardened Scales, okay. And Ranger class, so that can add extra counters to the Stone Coil, to the point where it can attack past Incubation Druid successfully. Right, just attacking with Kodama. So sure, we'll let Nissa fall to one. And then now we should be able to protect our Planeswalker with uh, the help from Vorinclex. And maybe even play Karn's Bastion to proliferate. And smash. Meant to attack with Vorinclex 2 here, but I guess an extra blocker doesn't hurt. Let's see, can I adapt and then still proliferate? This is 5 mana, so 4, 5. I think I'll be one short, so let's just proliferate then. Opponent falls to 14. Two blockers to protect Nyssa. And then next turn we can uh, animate another forest, attack, proliferate, and that should do it. Ren entering with half as much loyalty. Won't even be able to make a tree folk. So just plussing. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Adlin, so white aggro, and my hand seems promising. Lots of ramp to run out Vorinclex. And then we can maybe even draw some extra cards off Curator, if we draw the right creatures. Going turn to Merge Keeper, turn 3 Rishkar is probably the plan, that way Merge Keeper can run out a Curator as well. Turn one, Speaker of the Heavens. That's acceptable. I will take one. A remorseful Cleric can exile our graveyard. That's no big deal. Okay, Rishkar into Curator. And then next turn we can already play Vorinclex if we'd like. So not a bad start. And 
and uh, yeah, let's give it a try here. Play Vorinclex. I'll tap the Curator as well and uh, see what happens. Foreign Clax attacks, Rishkar can attack, I'm fine if it trades for both of their creatures. Let damage happen. So now they don't have any creatures to enable Adlin. Still surprised as to why they didn't play turn 3. Maybe setting up for a board wipe, I guess. That would make sense. Shatter the sky, at least we get to draw. Fair enough. Was not expecting a sweeper out of an Adeline deck, but uh, given that they didn't play turn 3, we should have probably read the signs. For now, Gallic Readers into Visionary still helps us get back on the board. And I'll make a treasure. Ooh, nice Guardian Project. Might be worth playing before Vorinclex. Which we can already replay next turn if we'd like. Would put two counters on the Greeters, for instance. Alright, there's Adlin. Oracle. Can I go Project plus Oracle? I can. So that seems worth it. Make another treasure with the greeters, since Oracle can block the 1-1 one -one tokens. And then draw Vivian, land on top. Perfect. And then Vivian with Vorinclex is a powerful combo as well. It's going to be Felidar Retreat plus a land making a 2-2 two -two token. Alright, so we can block the 1-1. One -one. Take 4. And a portable hole can exile greeters. Start by playing a lands over the top, always a nice feeling. Could keep Boseju as a way to answer a retreat, I think I'm still playing it here for value. And then, how about a Vorinclex using Castle? That should work. And then play an Ochre Jelly afterwards. Or would we prefer Vivian? Yeah, I guess Vivian now, and then we can play a bigger Jelly next turn. Fine to minus, since we've got 8 loyalty here to start out, thanks to Vorinclex. And attack for 6. Although I could play it safe to protect Vivian, keep Vorinclex back. So I'm fine if they just replay Adlin here. It's gonna be an Eidolon, making it more expensive to activate our Planeswalker and a Bounty Agent, which can also take out a Legendary Permanence. Play a couple more lands, always feels nice, and there's a Great Henge coming up. Can draw into it with Ochre Jelly. So, play one for five here is probably good enough. Enters as a 10-10 Trampler, play two mana Henge. And now we're going off. And then Vivian, probably fine two plus. Could also kill the bounty agents, so it doesn't deal with our henge. And then if I play Ozolith, I wouldn't be able to proliferate anymore, so we'll just save that. Attack for six. And I'm fine with the trade. Opponent takes it. And of course now with Vorinclex in play, the Retreat is unable to put counters on the team, since that wouldn't do much. End of turn Proliferate. Play a couple more lands off the top. Can a Hydra, let's say for 6 maybe. 
find Adelin. Draw into Vivian. Draw with Henge, draw with Project. Play another Vivian. We'll have to pay some mana to activate him because of Eidolon, but I think we can still afford a Beast Caller first. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. Okay, that was a mono green Vorinclex. Very powerful once it gets Vorinclex and its various plus one counter engines online. Although it is a pretty one dimensional deck that doesn't even have much interaction. So it's not going to be great at stopping whatever the opponent is doing if it doesn't get off to a quick start itself. So that's very important. And then of course sweepers are going to be pretty back breaking whenever you're playing a mono green deck like this one. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Stay tuned for the next Praetor deck as we continue Praetor Week. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.